I'm Dr. Sean Coyne, clinical health psychologist. And today, I want to talk about stress and the biological ways it impacts us. What is stress? Stress is really our body's response to a threat, and it can come in a variety of forms. We often think of it as big problems, like a job loss, a health crisis. Stress can also be small, daily hassles, like traffic, or misplacing your cell phone or car keys. Stress can come from environmental sources. Think of the pollen season, or maybe changes in barometric pressure. And stress can also come from changes in our daily routine. That day you forgot your lunch, or the day you didn't get very much sleep. Stress impacts our brain sometimes so quickly before we're even consciously aware that we're being stressed. And our brain starts changing all of our body. Let me give you a few examples of ways stress will change your body. Your heart rate will elevate. Your respiration may change. You can have changes in your muscle tone. You can have changes in your gastrointestinal tract. And these are just a few examples. All of these changes are associated with an important survival system that our species has relied on since the start of humankind. We sometimes call it fight or flight. Let's think about our current world today, where we have high stress, lots of stressors. We are stressed quite frequently, which means we may be taxing our body quite frequently. And when the stress response is occurring often, a number of things can happen, including an increase in the production of cortisol. That's one of your body's primary stress hormones. And it's quite helpful in moments of stress because it allows us to process the glucose, the sugar we've stored in our body, get it to the organs that need it most. However, if you're continually stressed, you're continually producing that hormone and it can lead to some negative effects, including decreased immune function. By that, I mean you're more likely to catch the cold your grandchildren bring to your house. Your blood pressure may go up. Your cholesterol counts may go up. You are at greater risk for depression, and you may even have difficulty thinking and remembering things. No one wants these changes, and they make us kind of unhappy. And with the unhappiness can come shortness of temper with maybe people we care about. And we become less productive in the things we like to do. Let's look at some examples of how stress affects the body. A quick one that you're probably familiar with happens when driving. Imagine a car suddenly pulls in front of you and you have to slam on the brakes quickly or veer to the side to stay safe. Even after the threat is over and you are safe, you'll notice your heart rate has accelerated and is probably still beating a little quickly. You've probably seen this in your own life in some subtle and complex ways. For example, some people have a sudden headache during stressful times, which is really a response to that increased blood pressure and the brain is responding with a pain sensation. That stressed brain is much more active during times of stress. And then we have worry thoughts on top of it. Between the stressed brain and the worry thoughts, we can be awake at night having difficulty sleeping. So now your body, which was already taxed, is gonna feel even more fatigue from lack of sleep. Some folks experience sore shoulders, sore neck, maybe even sore back, which is the result of ongoing muscle tension that your stress is causing. You might find yourself making simple mistakes, forgetting things that you actually didn't forget before. So what can we do with all of this knowledge? How does it apply to our daily life? Well, the first step is recognizing what's going on. Stress has a number of physiological signs. I like to call them your tell. We each have a different tell that we're under stress. We may not all have the same one, and you may not have the same one all the time, but it's good to watch for them. Let me name several and see if you recognize yourself in one of these. So as I mentioned before, stress can cause muscle tension, headaches. Other people may feel tightness in their chest or a pressure sensation. You may have quick or shallow breaths. You may feel flushed 
or hot. Some people have an upset stomach. Others have problems with sleep. Some even have trouble holding a hand steady, a shakiness. When you identify what your stress is, now it's your job to watch for it. And when that happens, you don't get to just sit back. You have to take action because by taking action, we can address it. So what should you do? Well, let's look at the two places you may find yourself, work and home. So we can do different things at different times. Let's start with the work environment. I encourage you to take breaks during your work day. Now I do realize not everyone has a job in which they can take 15 or 30 minute breaks. But did you know that even just 30 seconds counts? Those 30 seconds give your body an opportunity to calm down, get yourself back to baseline. You can take a break between meetings, between phone calls. What should you do during that break? Well, I encourage you to breathe, but I don't just mean any breath. I wanna teach you to breathe from your diaphragm. When we do this, it calms our body, lowers our heart rate, and helps to bring us back to baseline. Diaphragmatic breathing is a process where you use a muscle underneath your lungs, called the diaphragm, to push down, making space, which allows your lungs to increase the intake of air as you breathe. You breathe in through your nose, which will filter the air and warm it as it enters your lungs. A lengthy exhale is important in order to fully empty your lungs so you can take your next breath at full capacity. When we breathe this way, it looks like this. You'll find your diaphragm moves and this doesn't move as much. When we first try diaphragmatic breathing, it may feel a little bit foreign, but with regular practice, it does become more comfortable. While you can take those breathing skills home with you, let's look at what we can do in our home setting because we have a little more flexibility in our schedule there. What I would recommend is engaging in good, consistent self-care. Here's why I say consistent. Consistency limits the number of changes that happen in our life. It may be a little boring, but there's less change to adapt to, which means less stress. What do I mean by self-care? There are many ways we can engage in self-care. The three you may be most familiar with are nutrition, sleep, and exercise. But there are actually many more. So you may want to take out a piece of paper and take some notes. So let's start with nutrition. I recommend getting at least three meals a day. Three meals of balanced nutrition made of good food. If you're a diabetic, you may need more than that. How about sleep? We strongly recommend seven to eight hours of sleep per night. Now you may be thinking, oh, I can get by with six. But without those last one or two hours, you're depriving your brain of the ability to fully rest and to cement some of the memories you made from the day before. If you're struggling with sleep and want some recommendations on how to improve it, you can learn more if you tune into our behavioral health podcast series. We have an episode completely related to sleep. The third one that's very commonly known is exercise. Exercise has a number of biological benefits. The first is that it produces endorphins and dopamine in your brain. These are the feel-good chemicals that we like. Second, exercise can produce a comparable benefit to taking an antidepressant pill. Exercise can help to regulate your stress response. And when you exercise, it improves your cognitive flexibility. By that, I mean you're not stuck focusing on your stressors, thinking of negative thoughts. If you'd like to learn more about this, our video on the psychological impacts of stress management can help with that. What are some other self-care behaviors you can engage in? Well, think about medication. Do you take a prescription? Take it as prescribed. Don't cut pills in half. Don't skip days to save money. Those pills, that prescription is there to keep you stable. 
Avoid mood-altering substances like nicotine and alcohol. You may even want to reduce your caffeine intake. These substances cause a change in our body as the substance is in your body, and then as the substance wears out, there's another change you have to get used to, and changes are stressors. Reduce your screen time. When we're looking at a screen, we're not spending time with the people we care about. And looking at that screen, the blue light that powers it activates your brain in a different way. So if you're using screens before bed, it may help keep you awake. Another self-care behavior, like I mentioned earlier, take some breaks, practice relaxation, give yourself downtime. If you have spiritual needs, attend to them. They're important, that's part of your self-care. If you have creative needs, attend to those. They're important too. And lastly, get connected with other people. The research says that when we spend time with people who are important to us, our stress response goes down. And if during that time, we talk about our emotions, it helps even more. In addition to good, consistent self-care, I also recommend you do something at home that's important to you. What do you value? What do you enjoy? Do it. When you do it, not only does it make us happy and proud, but it lowers our stress response. We'll talk more about this in our video on the social aspects of stress management. Now that you know all of this, what's next? Well, the first thing you can do, which is pretty simple, is I encourage you to check out our other videos on managing stress. But I also encourage you to create a challenge for yourself. In fact, let's make two challenges. First, See if you can commit to taking two breaks tomorrow. Two breaks where you stop and you breathe for a whole minute. I'm just asking you to take two minutes out of your whole day. That's not a lot. For your second challenge, go back over that list of self-care behaviors. Pick out one, just one, that's important to you that maybe you want some improvement on. Now, pick out a day in the coming week that you want to focus on that behavior for that day and give it your all. So after you take two breaks one day and after you work on that self-care, do take a pause afterwards. Evaluate. Did it work? How did it feel? Did you notice a greater sense of calm? When you notice that, you're more likely to repeat it again. And I also encourage you to check out a video I narrate on mindfulness and breathing and how we can bring those two things together to take a break as well. I wish you luck on your challenge and stay well.